Dispensationalism is a Christian evangelical, futurist, biblical interpretation that believes that God has related to human beings in different ways under different biblical covenants in a series of dispensations, or periods in history. As a system, dispensationalism is expounded in the writings of John Nelson Darby and the Plymouth Brethren movement, and propagated through works such as Cyrus Schofield's Schofield Reference Bible. The theology of dispensationalism consists of a distinctive eschatological and times perspective, as all dispensationalists hold to premillennialism and most hold to a pre-tribulation rapture. Dispensationalists believe that the nation of Israel is distinct from the Christian Church, and that God has yet to fulfill His promises to national Israel. These promises include the land promises, which in the future world to come result in a millennial kingdom and third temple where Christ, upon His return, will rule the world from Jerusalem for a thousand years. In other areas of theology, dispensationalists hold to a wide range of beliefs within the evangelical and fundamentalist spectrum. With the rise of dispensationalism, some Protestants, where the dispensationalist view is particularly salient, came to interpret elements of the Book of Revelation not as an account of past events, but as predictions of the future. Estimates of the number of people who hold dispensationalist beliefs vary between 5 and 40 million in the United States alone. Concepts equals Progressive revelation equals One of the most important underlying theological concepts for dispensationalism is progressive revelation. While some non-dispensationalists start with progressive revelation in the New Testament and refer this revelation back into the Old Testament, Dispensationalists begin with progressive revelation in the Old Testament and read forward in a historical sense. Therefore, there is an emphasis on a gradually developed unity as seen in the entirety of Scripture. Biblical covenants are intricately tied to the dispensations. When these biblical covenants are compared and contrasted, the result is a historical ordering of different dispensations. Also, with regard to the different biblical covenant promises, Dispensationalism emphasizes to whom these promises were written, the original recipients. This has led to certain fundamental dispensational beliefs, such as a distinction between Israel and the Church. Equals historical grammatical interpretation equals, another important theological concept is the emphasis on what is referred to as the historical grammatical, or literal, method of interpretation. Just as Israel was said to have literally experienced the curses spoken of in the Old Testament, dispensationalists believe that they will one day, literally, receive the blessings spoken of in the Old Testament. Just as it is with progressive revelation, the historical grammatical method is not a concept or practice that is exclusive just to dispensationalists. However, a dispensational distinctive is created when the historical grammatical method of interpretation is closely coupled with an emphasis on progressive revelation along with the historical development of the covenants in Scripture. Equals distinction between Israel and the Church equals, all dispensationalists hold to a clear distinction between Israel and the Church. For dispensationalists, Israel is an ethnic nation consisting of Hebrews, beginning with Abraham and continuing in existence to the present. The Church consists of all saved individuals in this present dispensation a euro that is, from the birth of the Church in Acts until the time of the Rapture. The distinction between Israel and the Church is not mutually exclusive, as there is a recognized overlap between the two. The overlap consists of Jewish Christians, who were ethnically Jewish and also have faith in Jesus Christ. Dispensationalists also believe that toward the end of the tribulation, Israel as a nation will turn and embrace Jesus as their Messiah right before his second coming during the Great Tribulation. The spectrum of teaching on Israel and the Church may be depicted as below. Classical dispensationalists refer to the present day Church as a parenthesis, or temporary interlude in the progress of Israel's prophesied history. Progressive dispensationalism softens the Church Israel distinction by seeing some Old Testament promises as expanded by the New Testament to include the Church. However, progressives never view this expansion as replacing promises to its original audience, Israel. Covenant theology is the alternative view to dispensationalism that holds that God has won people Israel and the promises to Israel made in the Old Testament were fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the new Israel and the object of Abraham's hope. 
Dispensationalists have often criticized covenant theology as being identical with what they call replacement theology, or supersessionism, the concept that the church has replaced Israel. However, in covenant theology, the church is not a replacement for the nation of Israel, but has always been the spiritual Israel. Covenant theologians distinguish between Israel of the flesh and Israel of the spirit, which began with Adam and Eve and mature largely within ethnic Israel. Jewish Christians are included in the spiritual Israel. Covenant theologians likewise accuse dispensationalism of replacement theology. The position of covenant theology on the relationship of the physical and spiritual Israels can be summarized in Romans 2.28-29 and in Romans 9.6. Equals dispensations equals, the label dispensationalism is derived from the idea that biblical history is best understood through division into a series of chronologically successive dispensations. The number of dispensations held are typically three, four, seven, or eight. The three and four dispensation schemes are often referred to as minimalist, as they recognize the commonly held major breaks within biblical history. The seven and eight dispensation schemes are often closely associated with the announcement or inauguration of certain biblical covenants. Below is a table comparing the various dispensational schemes. Equals start of the church age equals. Mainstream dispensationalists such as Schofield and Ironside identify Pentecost, in the second chapter of Acts, with the start of the church as distinct from Israel. This may be referred to as the Acts II position. Grace movement dispensationalists believe that the church started after Acts II, focusing primarily on the ministry of Paul. Advocates of the mid-Acts position, see the regular Gentile form and order of the dispensation open in the hands of the Apostle Paul the apostle of the uncircumcision, the apostle of the Gentiles. Paul does not derive his ministry from the apostles to the circumcision nor was he indeed a successor to our Lord's Jewish mission. He had a unique mission from the Lord in heaven to go to the uncircumcision. Thus they identify the start of the church with the salvation of Saul in Acts 9, or with Paul's first missionary journey in Acts 13. The Acts 28 feet position most notably expounded by E. W. Bullinger and Charles H. Welch, posits the beginning of the church in Acts chapter 28 where the Apostle Paul quoted Isaiah 6 9, 10 concerning the blindness of Israel and announced that the salvation of God is sent to the Gentile world in Acts 28 28. Hyperdispensationalists are considered divisive notably because they reject the rite of water baptism practiced by almost all Christian denominations. They do believe in baptism, but instead of water baptism, they believe in baptism by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ, which occurs when a person becomes saved by believing that Jesus Christ died for their sins. Grace movement dispensationalists do not see water baptism as being necessary in this dispensation. Acts 28 dispensationalists also believe in the A Euro Eurion Baptisma Euro of Ephesians 4 5 being a spiritual baptism which identifies the believer with the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. Equals eschatology equals. Dispensationalists are premillennialists who affirm a future, literal 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ which merges with and continues on to the eternal state in the new heavens and the new earth, and they hold that the millennial kingdom will be theocratic in nature and not mainly soteriological, as it is viewed by George Eldon Ladd and others who hold to a non-dispensational form of premillennialism. Dispensationalism is known for its views respecting the nation of Israel during this millennial kingdom reign, in which Israel as a nation plays a major role and regains a king, a land, and an everlasting kingdom. The vast majority of dispensationalists hold to the pre-tribulation rapture, with small minorities holding to either a mid-tribulation or post-tribulation rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 states the dead in Christ shall rise first, and Revelation 24-5 says, they came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who shares in the first resurrection. Darby's influence, although profound in the comparative small membership of the Plymouth Brethren, is far overshadowed by his influence on the eschatology of Christian fundamentalists in general. History 
The concept of the arranging of divisions in biblical history dates back to Irenaeus in the 2nd century. Other Christian writers and leaders since then, such as Augustine of Hippo and Joachim of Theor, have also offered their own arrangements of history. Many Protestant and Calvinist writers, including Hermann Witsius, Francis Chiretin, John Bale, Thomas Brightman, Henry Finch, John Archer, Thomas Manton, William Gouge, Thomas Goodwin, John Birchenscher, William Sherwin, Francis Hutchinson, Pierre Duryeu, Pierre Poirot, John Edwards, and Isaac Watts also developed theological schemes and divisions in history, in particular after the Westminster Confession of Faith noted various dispensations. Other concepts such as premillennialism and the rapture also predated dispensationalism as a system. Stemming from the Reformed tradition emerged the covenant theology, which deals with biblical history as different covenants between God and mankind, but not dispensations. Scottish pastor Edward Irving was influenced by the book Coming of Messiah in Glory and Majesty, during the 1820s. The book had been written by a Jesuit priest named Manuel Larkinza, but was published under the name Ben Ezra. Irving translated the book from Spanish to English, added his own commentary and had the book published in 1827. Irving taught a form of dispensational theology at the Albury Prophetic Conference. As a system, dispensationalism is rooted in the Plymouth Brethren movement in the 1830s of Ireland and England, and in the teachings of John Nelson Darby. The original concept came from Darby's interpretation of 2 Timothy 2.15. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Darby traveled extensively to continental Europe, New Zealand, Canada, and the United States in an attempt to make converts to the Brethren movement. Over time, Darby's eschatological views grew in popularity in the United States, especially among Baptists and Old School Presbyterians. Equals United States of America equals, John Nelson Darby is recognized as the father of dispensationalism, which was later adopted, modified significantly and then made popular in the United States by Cyrus Schofield's Schofield Reference Bible. Charles Henry Mackintosh, 1820 Euro 96, with his popular style spread Darby's teachings to humbler elements in society and may be regarded as the journalist of the Brethren movement. Mackintosh popularized Darby more than any other Brethren author. As there was no Christian teaching of a rapture before Darby began preaching about it in the 1830s, he is sometimes credited with originating the secret rapture theory wherein Christ will suddenly remove his bride, the Church, from this world before the judgments of the tribulation. Dispensationalist beliefs about the fate of the Jews and the re-establishment of the Kingdom of Israel put dispensationalists at the forefront of Christian Zionism, because God is able to graft them in again, and they believe that in His grace He will do so according to their understanding of Old Testament prophecy. They believe that, while the methodologies of God may change, His purposes to bless Israel will never be forgotten, just as He has shown unmerited favor to the Church, He will do so to a remnant of Israel to fulfill all the promises made to the genetic seed of Abraham. Dispensationalism was introduced to North America by James Ingalls through a monthly magazine called Waymarks in the Wilderness, published intermittently between 1854 and 1872. In 1866, Ingalls organized the Believers' Meeting for Bible Study, which introduced dispensationalist ideas to a small but influential circle of American evangelicals. They were disturbed by the inroads of liberalism and saw premillennialism as an answer. Dispensationalism was introduced as a premillennial position, and it largely, over a period of several decades, took over the fundamentalist movement which stood against liberalism. The American church denominations rejected Darby's ecclesiology but accepted his eschatology. Many of these churches were Presbyterian and Baptist, and they retained Darby's Calvinistic soteriology who had applied it to his notion of dispensations. After Ingalls' death, James H. Brooks, the pastor of Walnut Street Presbyterian Church in St. Louis, organized the Niagara Bible Conference to continue the dissemination of dispensationalist ideas. Dispensationalism was boosted after Dwight L. Moody learned of dispensational truth from an unidentified member of the Brethren in 1872. Moody became close to Brooks and other dispensationalists and encouraged the spread of dispensationalism, 
but apparently never learned the nuances of the dispensationalist system. Dispensationalism began to evolve during this time, most significantly when a significant body of dispensationalists proposed the pre-tribulation rapture. This caused a bit of a clash with the historical premillennialists within the fundamentalist camp. Dispensationalist leaders in Moody's circle include Reuben Archer Teray, James M. Gray, Cyrus I. Schofield, William J. Edman, A. C. Dixon, A. J. Gordon and William Eugene Blackstone, author of the best-selling book of the 1800s titled, Jesus is Coming. These men were activist evangelists who promoted a host of Bible conferences and other missionary and evangelistic efforts. They also gave the dispensationalist movement institutional permanence by assuming leadership of the new independent Bible Institutes such as the Moody Bible Institute in 1886, the Bible Institute of Los Angeles in 1908, and Philadelphia College of Bible in 1913. The network of related institutes that soon sprang up became the nucleus for the spread of American dispensationalism. The efforts of C.I. Schofield and his associates introduced dispensationalism to a wider audience in America through his Schofield Reference Bible. The publication of the Schofield Reference Bible in 1909 by the Oxford University Press for the first time displayed overtly dispensationalist notes to the pages of the biblical text. The Schofield Reference Bible became a popular Bible used by independent evangelicals and fundamentalists in the United States. Evangelist and Bible teacher Lewis Sperry Chafer, who was influenced by Schofield, founded the Dallas Theological Seminary in 1924, which has become the flagship of dispensationalism in America. More recently, the Baptist Bible Seminary in Clark Summit, Pennsylvania, became another dispensational school. The Grace Movement, which began about 1938 with the teaching ministries of J.C. O'Hare, Cornelius Astam, Henry T. Hudson, and Charles Baker has been labeled ultra, or hyper-dispensationalism. The term serves to distinguish a theological system that has applied the tenets of dispensationalism far more consistently than the Acts II position. Thus it has also been designated at times as consistent dispensationalism. J. C. O'Hare in the early 1920s understood the sign gifts to be not for this age of grace and thus not for the present church. Soon thereafter, he understood as a correlating dispensational truth that water baptism could not then apply to this dispensation either. Among others, DeHaan and Ironside were sympathetic and did not perform the water rite themselves but none of these men forbade it if a Christian had a conscience to be baptized. By the 1930s, J. C. O'Hare rejected an Acts chapter 2 beginning of the church and started to explore and lean towards a position similar to Sir Robert Anderson and E. W. Bullinger. It was during this time that Ironside wrote wrongly dividing the brethren attacking Bullingerism. Some have failed to understand that Ironside's book does not address the mid-Acts position which O'Hare had not settled on until later. Almost all attacks on hyper-dispensationalism totally fail to differentiate between the mid-Acts position and the Acts 28 position. But J. C. O'Hare also rejected the Acts 28 position after studying the writings of Bullinger and C. H. Welch. O'Hare seems to finally have landed on the mid-acts position by about 1938. The contrasts between law and grace, prophecy and mystery, Israel and the Church, the body of Christ were promoted by Schofield, Barnhouse and Ironside, then studied and taught by O'Hare, Stam and other grace teachers. It is however contended by dispensational teachers such as Charles Caldwell Reary, J. Dwight Pentecost, and Arnold Fruchtenborn that ultra-dispensationalism is removed enough from dispensationalism not any longer to be dispensationalism at all. Nevertheless, ultra-dispensationalism continues to be forcefully advocated by many as the consistent position on dispensationalism and does indeed in many ways remain close to Darby unlike modified dispensationalism. The dispensationalists allege that the Acts II position does not take the time to properly and fully understand the mid-Acts position and challenge it in any way other than superficially if at all. Mostly, they feel consistent dispensationalists are ignored and that, until consistent dispensationalism is taken seriously, such dismissals by Acts II proponents cannot be taken seriously. Ultra-dispensationalists consider themselves fundamentalists, evangelical, 
and serious dispensationalists holding to the tenets of dispensationalism far more strictly and precisely than the more popular Acts II position. In 2007, a new dispensational view was formed by Steve Urick, called, Acts I Dispensationalism. This position sees the Church and Israel as being one in the body of Christ via his death on the cross and the reign of Christ as the head over all the family of God, in heaven and earth, as beginning in Acts 1, after he ascended into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Dispensationalism has become very popular with American evangelicalism, especially among non-denominational Bible churches, Baptists, Pentecostal, and Charismatic groups. Protestant denominations that as a whole embrace covenant theology reject dispensationalism. For example, the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA termed it evil and subversive, and regards it as a heresy. The Churches of Christ underwent division in the 1930s as Robert Henry Bowl, who taught a variant of the dispensational view, and Foye Wallace, representing the prevalent post-millennial become our millennial view clashed severely over eschatology. Influence, dispensationalism rejects the notion of supersessionism, still sees the Jewish people as God's chosen people, and sees the modern state of Israel as leading to the Israel who will receive the fulfillment of all God's Old Testament promises. John Nelson Darby taught, and most subsequent dispensationalists have consistently maintained, that God looks upon the Jews as his chosen people even as they remain in rejection of Jesus Christ and God continues to have a place for them in the dispensational, prophetic scheme of things. Dispensationalists teach that a remnant within the nation of Israel will be born again, called of God, and by grace brought to realize they crucified their Messiah. Dispensationalism is unique in teaching that the church is a provisional parenthesis, a mystery period, meaning that it was not revealed in the Old Testament, directly which period will end with the rapture of the church and the Jewish remnant entering the Great Tribulation. Israel will finally recognize Jesus as their promised Messiah during the trials that come upon them in this tribulation. Darby's teachings envision Judaism as continuing to enjoy God's protection literally to the end of time, and teach that God has a separate program, to use J. Dwight Pentecost's term, for each Israel and the church. Dispensationalists teach that God has eternal covenants with Israel, which cannot be broken. While stressing that God has not forsaken those physically descended from Abraham through Isaac, dispensationalists do affirm the necessity for Jews to receive Jesus as Messiah. They hold that God made unconditional covenants with Israel as a people and nation in the Abrahamic, Palestinian, Davidic and the New Covenant. Judaism Christian dispensationalists sometimes embrace what some critics have pejoratively called Judeophilia Euro ranging from support of the State of Israel, to observing traditional Jewish holidays and practicing traditionally Jewish religious rituals dispensationalists typically support the modern State of Israel, recognize its existence as God revealing his will for the last days, and reject anti-Semitism. Messianic Judaism equals Dispensationalists tend to have special interest in the Jews because the dispensationalist hermeneutic honors biblical passages that list Jews as among God's chosen people. Some Messianic Jews, however, reject dispensationalism in favor of a related but distinct hermeneutics, called Olive Tree Theology. The name Olive Tree Theology refers to the passages of Romans 11:17 Euro 18, if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive, were grafted in among them and have become equal sharers in the rich root of the olive tree, then don't boast as if you were better than the branches. Equals Antichrist equals, some dispensationalists, such as the late fundamentalist Jerry Falwell, have asserted that the Antichrist will be a Jew, based on a belief that the Antichrist will falsely seem to some Jews to fulfill prophecies of the Messiah more accurately than Jesus did. However, many dispensationalists do not accept this belief, and claim that a number of scriptures do not cite any evidence, such as Daniel 9.27. Such dispensationalists claim that this prince will be of the same people that destroyed the Jewish city in 70 AD, that is, of Roman origin and therefore will not be Jewish. However, other dispensationalists base the nationality of the army that destroyed Jerusalem as comprising an Arab and Syrian ethnicity, and therefore the Antichrist, or the prince, shall not actually be of Roman origin. In turn, 
This prince will stand up against the Prince of Princes, and destroy many by peace. And will be responsible for the false peace and safety that will precede the destructive day of the Lord. Some believe this man will be a Jew, based in part on John 5.43, where the Lord stated that the unbelieving Jews would receive another who shall come in his own name. Further evidence is taken from Daniel 11.37, Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all, although in a passage as late as Daniel, a better translation is probably, he will reject the gods of his fathers. The prophet Daniel refers to this man as a vile person, who will obtain the kingdom by flatteries. This belief is not essential to dispensationalism. Darby himself taught the Antichrist will be a Jew, and the beast, a separate person, will be the political leader of the revived Roman Empire. United States politics, political analyst Richard Allen Green has argued that dispensationalism has had a major influence on the foreign policy of the United States. This influence has included continued support for the State of Israel. Political commentator Kevin Phillips points out in his book American Theocracy how dispensationalists and other fundamentalist Christians, together with the oil lobby, have provided political support for the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Fiction, dispensationalist themes form the basis of the popular Left Behind series of books. However, not all dispensationalists agree with the theology of authors Tim Lahaye and Jerry Jenkins. See also Anglo-Israelism, Christian eschatology, fundamentalist Christianity, law of Christ, millennial day theory, Hebrew roots, progressive dispensationalism, post-tribulation, second coming, whore of Babylon. References Further reading, Alice, Oswald T. Prophecy and the Church. ISBN 1-57910-709-5, Bass, Clarence B. Backgrounds to Dispensationalism ISBN 0-8010-0535-3, Boyer, Paul. When Time Shall Be No More, Prophecy Belief in Modern American Culture ISBN 0-674-95129-1, Klaus, Robert G., ed. The Millennium, Four Views ISBN 0-87784-794-0, Eanes, Paul. The Moody Handbook of Theology ISBN 0-8024-3428-2, Xner, John H. Wrongly Dividing the Word of Truth, A Critique of Dispensationalism. Third Edition. Nassine Council, 2009. ISBN 978-0977851690, Grenz, Stanley. The Millennial Maze ISBN 0-8308-1757-3, La Hai, Tim, and Jerry B. Jenkins. Are We Living in the End Times? ISBN 0-8423-0098-8, Manjum, R. Todd. The Dispensational Covenantal Rift ISBN 1-55635-482-7, Manjum, R. Todd and Mark's Vietnam, The Schofield Bible, Its History and Impact on the Evangelical Church ISBN 9780830857517, Macdonald, Marcy The Armageddon Factor. The Rise of Christian Nationalism in Canada ISBN 0-307-35646-9. Phillips, Kevin American Theocracy, The Peril in Politics of Radical Religion, Oil, and Borrowed Money in the 21st Century ISBN 0-670-03486-X, Poitras, Vern. Understanding Dispensationalists ISBN 978-0-87552-374-3, Riri, Charles C. Dispensationalism ISBN 0-8024-2187-3, Riri, Charles C. Basic Theology ISBN 0-8024-2734-0, Showers, Reynold. There really is a difference? A Comparison of Covenant and Dispensational Theology. Friends of Israel Gospel Ministry. 
ISBN 0-915540-50-9, Wal Wood, John. The Millennial Kingdom ISBN 0-310-34091-8, Vietnam, Mark the Dispensations, God's Plan for the Ages ISBN 978-1-909789-00-5, Wal Wood. John F. Prophecy in the New Millennium ISBN 0-8254-3967-1, O'Hare, J.C. The Unsearchable Riches of Christ, 1. External links, The Dispensational Brian, Dispensationalism Articles.